Hi, STEM scholars. I'm Dr. Kelly Christopher, and I'm so excited to talk to you today about chemical reactions, but also I'm excited because we get to create our very own bath bombs. Now, first I wanna give you an example of the chemistry that goes behind bath bombs. A chemical reaction is basically when different substances are combined and then they create, or their atoms rearrange to create completely different substances. So today we're gonna to work with a couple of uh, substances to show you a quick chemical reaction. For this first experiment, you're going to need baking soda. You're also gonna need citric acid. Citric acid can be bought at the grocery store or any place that sells canning supplies. People who make jams and jellies might use citric acid to preserve their uh, creations, or let's just say you have vegetables that you wanna harvest, they might use citric acid in canning. But if you have ever peeled an orange or uh, then rubbed your eye or uh, squirted lemon juice in your eye, you would notice that your eye starts to sing. Citric acids are made from citrus fruits. And so just so we don't sting our eyes, I'm gonna put on some safety glasses as well. For this activity, you also need a small baggie, teaspoon measure and a quarter cup measure and just some water from your sink. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna open up our baggie. You might even get someone to help you with this because it can be a little bit difficult holding everything. We're gonna take a teaspoon of baking soda. And then a teaspoon of the citric acid and I'm trying to get just the right amount. Now this is the part that is very time sensitive. Once you're ready to add your liquids, you're going to have to close the baggie right away. So either uh, just be prepared to close it right away or have someone else hold the baggie for you so you can add the water and then seal the baggie. So first I'm going to just fill up my quarter cup measure All right, let me just move that. And then just quickly you're gonna add the water and you'll see a chemical reaction starting to take place. Now in this case, we took baking soda and citric acid and then they combined. Now one of the products of this particular chemical reaction is carbon dioxide. When we breathe in, we need oxygen to live, but when we breathe out, we breathe out carbon dioxide. That's what's in this baggie. So in this particular chemical reaction, carbon dioxide is formed. However, carbon dioxide is a gas. So we took two solids and a liquid, but we created a gas. We started with baking soda and citric acid. The chemical name for baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. The molecular formula for citric acid is C6H8O7. When combined with water, or H2O, all of the molecules rearrange, and the product is water, carbon dioxide, and sodium citrate. This is an example of a chemical reaction. Now I want you to feel the baggie. You might notice that it's gotten cold. Well, what happened here? That's because this is an example of an endothermic reaction. Thermic, of course, meaning heat. Endo, meaning in or absorb. So this particular chemical reaction absorbs heat and the water turns cold. So now we're ready to make our bath bombs. These are the supplies that you're going to need to make your bath bombs. First, you're going to need baking soda, citric acid, Epsom salts, cornstarch, vegetable oil. You'll need a little water. You'll need some fragrance, food coloring, uh, spoons. I have a fork here. You'll need a couple of droppers. You'll also need some sort of mold to um, make your bath bombs, to form your bath bombs. I have some 
bath bomb molds that I'm gonna use today, but you don't have to have a mold. You can make your own mold. Like this could be a mold. This came from a little diced peaches or something. But the important thing is that the container is a little bit flexible so that you can pop the bath bomb out after they're dry. You, or you could use something like an ice tray, but of course, one of the flexible ice trays. So again, that you can pop your bath bomb out at the end. You also need a couple of bowls, measuring spoons and measuring cups. First, we're gonna start with our dry ingredients. We're gonna start with our baking soda and we're gonna need six tablespoons of baking soda. When you look at your measuring spoon, a tablespoon usually is the abbreviation capital T-B-S. So you're gonna need six tablespoons of baking soda for this. And it's very important that you get a, a level scoop. Um, that just means that the, whatever ingredient that you're adding is flat against the top of the measuring spoon. You could even use a knife to get off any excess. So that's two, three, four, five, six. Next, you're gonna add three tablespoons of citric acid. Oh, I have to do this a little differently, but be careful. One, two. Next, we're gonna add four and a half tablespoons of our cornstarch. So you're gonna need two types of spoons. You're gonna use four tablespoons and one half tablespoon. One half, you'll look for the one half measure on the spoon. So let's start with the four tablespoons. And the last dry ingredient that you'll need are Epsom salts. I'm gonna start with the larger tablespoon and then the half tablespoon. And then we're just going to stir this up. Now I'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna get our wet ingredients. So these are our wet ingredients. First, we're going to take uh, two and one quarter teaspoons of water. So I've got my water here. That's two. You don't need a very big bowl for the liquid ingredients because all of them are pretty small measurements. For the teaspoon, the abbreviation for teaspoon is a lowercase t. S, P, so be sure to make sure you're using the right type of measurement for the teaspoons. Next, we're gonna add two and one quarter teaspoons of vegetable oil. Vegetable oil is kind of hard to measure out of the big, um, the big uh, container, so I put a little bit in a bowl just to help measure. So we're gonna need two two and one quarter teaspoons of vegetable oil. Now you're gonna to have to select a fragrance for your bath bomb. I'm choosing oatmeal milk and honey. So I'm going to add two tablespoons of my fragrance oil. And finally, <clears throat> you're gonna to have to pick a color for your bath bomb. Since my fragrance is oat milk and honey, oatmeal, milk, and honey, I'm going to use yellow. I feel like that'll be appropriate for this fragrance. But you know, you can choose anything you want. You wanna add about five drops of food coloring, okay? Now, of course, you don't have to add any color if you don't want to. And then you're gonna stir this. Now, you might remember we've talked about density and water and oil do not have the same density. So you will notice that these will separate, but that's okay, just stir it up again as you're doing this uh, activity. So these are all my wet ingredients. All right, 
So now you, we have to combine the wet ingredients with the dry ingredients. But this actually is a pretty long process because we have to add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients very carefully. And it's also important that we don't add too much liquid because if you add too much liquid, you're going to um, have too much of an, a reaction and we wanna make sure we just have a small reaction each time and we're able to create uh, a bath bomb that has the right consistency. Uh, so that we can put it in our molds. If it's too wet, they won't go in the molds. If it's too dry, uh, they'll crumble. So let's show you how this first drop of our liquid goes and be sure to fill your dropper up all the way. You can see a chemical reaction starting to take place when we add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients, but we actually do not want to see that. So as soon as the reaction starts taking place, you're gonna take a spoon and you're going to smash down the liquid ingredients. And you're gonna do this over and over again. You're going to add one dropper full, and notice I didn't say one drop, but one dropper full of liquids. And then as soon as the reaction starts taking place, you're gonna mash down. Now this is going to take some time. All right, this is almost ready. You'll know that it's ready because when you pinch it, it'll stay uh, in a, like a little ball. Um, but if it just breaks apart, it's too dry. But it's very important that you don't add too much liquid so it's, uh, so don't, uh, be impatient with this activity. Take your time and wait until the consistency is just right. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your mold and you're going to put a little bit of vegetable oil in the mold. It's kind of like uh, when you're baking a cake and you might grease the pan before uh, you put your cake batter in there. You're gonna put this oil in the mold before you put in your bath bomb mixture just to make sure it's easy to pop the uh, bath bomb out of the mold. So I'm gonna take a mold and you just start scooping the bath bomb mixture into the mold and pressing down as you shape it. This recipe makes enough for probably about two of this size mold but depending on the container, it might, uh, you might have enough for a little bit more. Also, if you don't have enough liquid as you're doing this activity and you, your uh, mixture is too dry, simply add a little bit more water and vegetable oil to the, uh, to the dry mixture until it's the right consistency. Once your molds are filled, you're gonna to have to let them dry and it's gonna take overnight. So I prepped one last night and I have the mold here with the bath bomb in it. So I'm just going to get it out of there. Ooh, it's a little bit, it can be a little tricky. Try not to break it though. There we go. And I made a couple others the other night too. So I've got my bath bombs and then I had a little bit extra left over again. So I made some little bitty bath bombs with those. So now I'm just going to show you what it looks like when you take your bath and you put one of your bath bombs in the water. And I've just got a little bowl of water here to demonstrate. I'm just gonna take one of my little bath bombs and I'm gonna just put it in the water. And you can see it's starting to fizz a little bit and the cool thing, in addition to this chemical reaction, you've got the Epsom salts in there and that helps with the muscles and your sore muscles. The fragrance smells really good. So you should be able to have a really relaxing bath. Well, that's all for today. I hope you learned something and I hope you had fun. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.